Hello everybody and welcome to another Brother Crypt video. Um, today I wanted to cover some cryptocurrency news and I just wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the things I've been into. Um, as you may or may not be aware, you know, the, the state of the market has really changed. So I just really wanted to give you some of my thoughts based on the news. Um, I think the first place to start is to thank everybody, um, all of my new subscribers, and for all of my old subscribers who have been with me for, since day one. Um, I've been doing this for about a few months now, and I'm really glad that we've got up to 100 subscribers. Um, I'll be doing a separate video very soon with details of my 100 subscriber video. Uh, so please do you know, like, please do share this video. If you're not subscribed and you think you'll be interested in this content, then please do subscribe. Um, if you think this content will be useful to anybody who's interested in cryptocurrency, uh, then please do share this. Um, but, so let's go. Um, you know, today is the 24th of April, and as I'm creating this video for, for you, it's roughly about uh, just six minutes past six UK time. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to create any videos for you last week uh, because I was traveling. It was my partner, Crypto, which is birthday, and we went away for a long weekend. Uh, just to enjoy and celebrate her birthday. I really did want to put some content for you together, but I really needed to concentrate on, you know, family life. Um, where are we now? Okay, so according to Cointelegraph today, um, the total market cap remains over 400 billion as markets see more green. It's a beautiful thing. Um, let's just quickly summarize the article. Bitcoin BTC has solidly broken above 9,000 and Ethereum um, is inching closer to $700 according to data from Coin360. As the crypto markets continue their upward swing that has now lasted more than two weeks, um, BTC is currently trading around 9,312, almost up 4% over a 24 hour period. Uh, by press time, BTC dominance is slightly down from its recent numbers in 40% range, currently at around 37.3% press time. Um, Ether is up 8% in a 24-hour period. Um, of the top 10 listed on CoinMarketCap, which are all in green, EOS is up most um, around... 17% over a 24-hour period. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is next highest, up around 9% over a 24-hour period, trading at 1,522 at press time. Um, total market cap is also solidly over 400 billion, specifically at around 220 billion at press time, according to Coin Market Cap. Okay. Yes, now let's just move on to coin market cap itself. Just let me just refresh this. Um, yeah, so really not much has changed. We can see that the market cap is currently at 426 billion, uh, climbing on to 427 billion. Um, we have 1,592 cryptocurrencies indexed on coin market cap, and the BTC dominance is at 37.2%. We can see that currently, right as of now, as I make this video, uh, Bitcoin price is at 9,340, which is good because prior to about two weeks ago, uh, Bitcoin really struggled to get comfortably above 8,000. And now it looks like we may be making traction to 10,000. Um, Ethereum has risen, um, as the article said. As we can see, it's around about 700. And uh, Ripple is approaching just under $1. We can see that Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash has slightly reduced uh, to around 1,466. 
um, as opposed to it being around 1,500 in the article. EOS has really climbed. Um, less than two weeks ago, it was at around $6. Um, and yeah, it's doubled dramatically. Right now, it's priced at $14.13. Okay. Um, let's move on with more market information and then I'll come back to the markets later. Um, so what does this say? This is also a Coin Telegraph article. Market strategy sees BTC soon hitting between 11,500 and 11,800. Um, Bill Branch of Blue Line Futures sees the crypto sector as continuing to rise in the long term, with the ultimate upside of Bitcoin BTC being between 11,500 to 11,800, according to a CNBC video posted on the 23rd of April. Uh, CNBC notes that Bridge um, has been right before in February of this year. When BTC's price dropped to below 7,000, Brooch had predicted that Bitcoin would recover from its from this low. BTC is now trading at around 9,300, um, over 2% in 24 hours. Okay, Brunch added um, yesterday that the sector still has much more upside in the long run, and a breakout above 11,800 is extremely bullish. He also highlights how many altcoins have doubled in value since February. Um, Cointelegraph recently reported about the plethora of market predictions in the volatile crypto sphere, explaining why some experts think BC uh, Bitcoin is heading to $100, while others believe it's going towards um, $100,000. Okay, um, let's move on to the next piece of Cointelegraph news. Right. Um, Reuters survey, at least 59 finance firms will enter crypto in next six months. 20% um, of financial firms want to start buying and selling digital tokens in 2018. Quartz reports Monday, 23rd of April. According to a range of over 400 undisclosed business surveys by Thomson Reuters, one um, in every five has plans to begin direct contact with cryptocurrency assets in the next 12 months. Um, Reuters, which began including Bitcoin sentiment in its data feed last month, did not mention the uh, stature of firms involved. Nevertheless, 70% of those who said yes to crypto in 2018 also said that they were planning to begin within the next three to six months, translating into at least uh, 56 new players offering cryptocurrency in some form by October. The positive outlook reflects the overall wave of enthusiasm uh, has characterized crypto markets in April. As Bitcoin and altcoin prices hold gains, which topped um, 9,280 on Tuesday, pundits have been weighing in on stronger performance due to set in for assets before 2019. Current price ranges, uh, excuse me, current price estimates range from 25,000 to 100,000 by the end of the year for Bitcoin, with traditional finance money jumping in after waiting on the sidelines re remaining a common narrative. On Monday, Pfizer Capital, John Pfizer, um, excuse me, John Pfizer announced he thought Bitcoin could eventually rise to 700,000. Wow. Okay, so yeah, this this is a very important article. Um, you, uh, guys, as you can see, and girls, as you can see, the sentiment recently has probably changed. Um, if we look back to one of the last cryptocurrency news updates I gave, 
the sentiment was really negative in less than two or three weeks. We've done 160 degrees on sentiment. This is really something to watch. But let's continue with some of the other articles. I will give you my analysis um, at the end of, uh, of going through some of the news that I've pointed out to, to discuss with you all. Now, Tim Draper says Bitcoin is bigger than the Industrial Revolution in debate with skeptics. American venture capitalist, investor and blockchain industry influencer Tim Draper claimed that Bitcoin, BTC, is bigger than the Internet and several other developments in human history. Um, during the Intelligence Squared US debate in New York City this Saturday, CNBC reported today, um, 23rd of April, during the debate which Draper undertook alongside Overstock CEO and Bitcoin bull uh, Patrick Ryan and against two crypto skeptics, the billionaire investor compared Bitcoin and evidently blockchain in general to his early investments in Tesla. Hotmail and Skype. He went further by stating that Bitcoin would be bigger than all of these combined and that the scale and importance of Bitcoin and technology behind it exceeds the major technical, technological developments in human history, saying it's bigger than the Iron Age, the resistance, it's bigger than the Industrial Revolution. Draper also voiced his oft-repeated prediction that in five years no one will be using tradi traditional government-backed money. In five years, you are going to try to go to buy coffee with fiat currency. Uh, they are going to laugh at you because <laughs> you're not using crypto. I believe that there will be a point at which you will no longer really want any of the fiat currency. As of December 2017, the venture capitalist investor was still holding around 30,000 bitcoins um, that he bought in a US Marshall service auction in 2014, CNBC reported. If Draper is still holding his BTC today, the investment is worth 270 million by press time. Um, the intelligence squad. A squared debate, Draper also spoke on Bitcoin market dominance, claiming that the largest cryptocurrency is likely to win the long-term crypto battle against altcoins. Meanwhile, BTC dominance or the percentage of total market cap that is Bitcoin is currently around 38%, down from its monthly high around 44%. Earlier in April, during a speech at his own Draper University, the VC tycoon predicted BCC will hit a whopping 250k per coin in the next four years. Draper also recently sat down with Cointelegraph for a serious interview in which he claimed that Bitcoin is clearly the leader amongst cryptocurrencies. This is, this is a very, very interesting guy, Tim Draper. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to watch the interview that he held with Coin Telegraph guys, um, I recommend you check it out. Just uh, do a Google search for Tim Draper, uh, Coin Telegraph. Um, as you know, this article states, um, Tim Draper holds a large amount of Bitcoin, and I believe that he's also doing some advisory roles for other cryptocurrencies that he finds, you know, important. But yes, you know, when we look at the state of money today, our money seriously deflation is seriously deflating. You know, a dollar has less buying power than it had ten years ago, and ten years ago, a dollar had less buying power than it had a hundred years ago. These are why property prices and other, you know, assets and commodities and food, anything that's important, is increasing in value. Luckily, with Bitcoin, if you're going to get into Bitcoin and Bitcoin is going to be the, the the future of money, it doesn't even have to be Bitcoin, but any cryptocurrency that you believe in is the future of money, then you are sort of hedged and you're protected by the um, inflation. 
you know, like I only bought a handful of Bitcoin, but that's gone from being um, almost a few hundred to tens of thousands of pounds, if not, if not hundreds almost, you know, it's really increased in value. And for me, that just, that seemed like a hedge, um, a hedge against inflation. But, but let's move on. Um, now, as I said, you know, the sentiment has really changed in the last two weeks. Here we have this Forbes article. Here's why Bitcoin is on the rise again, as according to Forbes. Um, I'm just going to skim read through some of this, what I find interesting. Um, Bitcoin is back from the brink, sort of. After topping near uh, $20,000 per Bitcoin in mid-December, the world's leading cryptocurrency by market cap has been nothing but free for ever since. But over the last week, Bitcoin has moved closer to 10,000, uh, cracking 9,000 in mid-morning trading on Tuesday. What's happening with this craze now? The quick answer, big investors and tech upgrades. Bitcoin is trading upwards for a number of reasons, says, says Fran, uh, CEO of Brave New Coin, a data and research company focused on the blockchain and cryptographic assets market. Um, they think that the fundamentals of Bitcoin have improved. Uh, recent improvements to its lightning network and outside forces from regulators are both bringing investors back. The US is stepping into a uh, regular security token instead of commodity assets utility and we are seeing major value investors stepping in into buying as a result he says um, as the Soros and Rockefellers of the world move into the ecosystem the asset class is legitimized and trending in extremely positive direction adding that Odds of a Bitcoin ETF getting approved by the, by the Securities and Exchange Commission have improved. Uh, Soros, 26 billion wealth management firm, is planning to trade digital assets. Um, Venrock, a venture capital firm associated with the Rockefeller family's personal wealth fund, is also getting into the act. Uh, they partnered with CoinFund, a crypto asset hedge fund run by Alex Felix in New York. They are investing in startups that also issue their own coins, CoinFund said on April the 6th. Uh, word is getting out that traditional financial industry players are preparing to enter crypto trading markets very soon, um, said a blockchain platform with its own cryptocurrency. Goldman Sachs reportedly hired a crypto trader, Justin Schmidt. Barclays is considering a crypto trading desk. Um, yeah, so let me just summarize this. The top 10 traded coins are all up as of late Tuesday morning. The EOS coin is the biggest gainer so far, more than 13%. Um, the coin trades at just over 1350 compared with around 9000 for Bitcoin. EOS is a Hong Kong based uh, software company developing solutions for blockchain platforms. Yes, this, this is, you know, very true. Um, we have the likes of Soros getting into the space. We have the likes of the Rockefeller getting into the space. You know, we have your Goldman Sachs getting into this space. And, um, you know, now Barclays are also sniffing around at this space. So, you know, here's, here's my opinion. Um, I think, you know, us, just the little people, people who have subscribed to my channel, I'm presuming that most of the people here are little people because, you know, it's people like my friends, my family, and other people who like my content that have subscribed to my channel. And, um, you know, forgive me for guessing, but most of us are small retail investors. You know, we're putting whatever money that we can. Uh, we, are, we are not whales by any least. You know, we, we don't have billions to, to put into the market. And we're not, you know, coming in and pumping billions into this economy. So 
you know, when it comes to the size of the market as sort of determined on coin market cap, when we see that we have a market capitalization of around 430 billion, the majority of that, unfortunately, is probably going to be institutional money. Uh, people that literally do have billions to invest into cryptocurrency who want to put their money in, maybe make a profit, take it out. And it's going to be the people like your Soros, like your Goldman Sachs, like your Rockefellers, which means that, yes, they sway the market. But this is why, you know, it is important because how I envisage it is you're going to have your nutters. You're going to have your people like me who who came across Bitcoin, who found it fascinating, who are a little bit, you know, techie, are a little bit geeky, may, may, maybe come from an IT background and maybe have anarchist tendencies or love the idea of having liberation through money, which was one of the reasons that I invested, you know. I thought, what, Bitcoin is decentralized? What, I don't need a bank? What, there's only 21 million? What, this is only governed by blockchain? These are the things that I really loved about Bitcoin. After hearing about Bitcoin, believe in the media, but when I started to do my own due diligence and came across these attributes, I was like, wow. And it's decentralized. Oh, I just, I just fell in love with it. And this is why I invested into it way back in 2013, 2014. And I'm really glad that I did, you know. So you probably back then, you didn't have that much institutional money. You only had a small market cap, less than 100 billion. And maybe you did have, you know, a, a few people with with firms, a few hundred million to invest. You did. But right now, what we're going to see is we're going to we've witnessed phases, you know, the phases were it was the individuals, it was the diehards, it was the people that got in really early. And then now you have your speculators, that was probably the next phase, people that said, hmm, I hear that there's volatility in cryptocurrency market. I don't really believe in it. I'm not really an anarchist. I don't really want freedom. I just want to make straight up money. And then and then over the last few years, probably since about 2014 onwards right here, the market has mainly grown by people who are speculating, people who have held the coins and want to sell it um, and have been trading it in between just to make a profit. Um, and, and I'm sure cryptocurrency has been very good to them because if you're good and you know what you're going to and you know what you're doing, you're going to make money in this space. However, now what we're probably seeing is the third wave of institutional investor money, like the Soros, like your banks, like your Goldman's, like your Barclays, like your Rockefellers, you know. And, you know, as the previous article I, I mentioned said, in this year alone, there are going to be 56 companies a venture capitalist firm who want to get into Bitcoin. And I'm guessing that that was probably written from an American perspective. So they've identified 50, around 50, that want to get into it, that want to get into cryptocurrency in 2018. And in, in my opinion, the number's going to be far bigger. I recall having a, a discussion with my sister. Um, my sister, you know, she works for uh, HSBC and she's compliance, but I've been telling her about Bitcoin since July. And, you know, she's been watching the market and, you know, we've been talking the developments in July. I told her that JP Morgan were looking into the space and uh, they have been doing their due diligence. And I said to her that they probably want to get in into this space. But at the time, I didn't know how. Later on in December, you know, or in January, they announced, um, excuse me, in December, we had rumors that Goldman wanted to create their own trading desk. But then in July, the acquisition of, of Circle, excuse me, the acquisition of of Poloniex, of Poloniex, uh, via Circle was announced, um, and that's basically how Goldman Sachs are gonna get.
get in or advise cryptocurrency, you know, to people who have, um, who, who, who are classified as uh, accredited investors. So right now, what phase we are in is a phase of institutional money coming in. And once institutional money comes in, then the next phase, in my opinion, is going to be mainstream wide adoption. Bitcoin will be marketed to sophisticated investors who currently don't have any, who probably don't know the technology. Companies like um, Barclays and Goldman Sachs and probably other uh, banks, either investment banks or even retail banks, are going to be pitching cryptocurrencies basically to their clients, just like money. So this is what I see. So r right now, you know, it's still a good time to buy. That's if you have a long term perspective. So, you know, if you're on the sidelines and you haven't bought into any cryptocurrency, you know, just invest what you can afford and have a lot, have a short term, excuse me, have a long term perspective for it. Just invest it like, hey, I can afford <laughs> uh, 10 or 50 pounds or 100 pounds or 1000, you know, whatever disposable cash you have at the month, just put it into crypto. And I would say, you know, if you're a beginner and you don't have any crypto and you want to get into it, that's potentially what you should do. However, if you're a, a little bit more advanced, and you're a bit more of intermediate, and you already have, you know, a small amount of crypto, then what's going to make you money in the long term, which is what I'm finding, is really by observing the markets. This is something that I'm doing. So um, I'm really studying, looking at the market on a day-to-day -day basis. Part of the reason I create these videos is for me to... Um, put my spin on the news at a particular time so I can look back and remind myself as as what's happened in terms of cryptocurrency over over a specific period of time okay but more on this later let's move on to the next articles I really wanted to not not keep this too long ah bitcoin value okay so the next article is from the independent in the UK Bitcoin value is on the verge of another price explosion, according to cryptocurrency experts. Um, yes, this is very similar to, the, to one of the articles I read. Bitcoin is primed for another price explosion, which could see the cryptocurrency value soar to greater levels than it experienced in 2017. This is seriously what I believe. The price prediction come amid significant gains across cryptocurrency market in recent weeks that have seen Bitcoin rise by more than a third in value to return to above 9,000 for the first time since March. Um, I'm not surprised to see uh, Bitcoin's price exceed 9,000 this week. Um, Rumours of a price explosion may seem to have been driven by more and more institutional buyers getting into cryptocurrency. Okay, yeah, so this is, you know, sort of similar to, to what we touched on. So let's move on to the next article. Um, and this is by The Insider UK. One in five firms are considering getting into crypto within the year. Um, this is very similar to the to the article that I just covered before. Um, London, a fifth of finance firms are considering getting into cryptocurrency trading within the next year, according to an industry poll by Thomson Reuters. A survey of over 400 Reuters clients found that one in five is considering getting into cryptocurrency with the major weight a push into a market within the next six months. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's move on because this is basically the same news. Um, so Goldman Sachs is getting serious about cryptocurrency. It's probably about the higher on the trading desk. Um, Goldman Sachs has made a significant push into cryptocurrency market earlier this month by hiring Justin Schmidt to lead its digital asset division. Now that sounds serious. See, this is what I like about Goldman because last year, this time last year, we heard that Goldman were doing research on the market. Um, 
what they do is they research markets before saying anything and then and then they swarm in and they're one of the first banks and probably one of the biggest banks in the world you know that have a lot of the most influential power because if you look at the you know the white house cabinet a lot of the advisors to Trump and the previous uh, President Obama were Goldman employees. So they definitely have power with the Senate and the White House. And who knows, they are probably um, secretly, covertly behind the SEC's um, SEC, the Security and Exchanges Commission's stance on them being laxed about cryptocurrency. And it must be because... When you had the announcement of um, Goldman Sachs buying um, uh, buying Polonialex through Circle, um, they actually went to the Security and Exchanges Commission and asked that um, basically for the SEC to turn a blind eye to any previous transgressions. Um, they are going to be fully compliant, but they want to buy this exchange. If they haven't been, you know, compliant in the past, please can you turn a blind eye so that we can buy this. But when we buy it, everything's going to be above board. So basically, that's that's what I heard. And obviously, you know, if you have friends in high places, then you're able to sway this. So in some ways, you know, I, I rate Goldman Sachs because they are helping us um, to create an industry and this is really what's required for widestream, mainstream adoption. So, yes, now what they are doing is they are creating a digital asset division. Um, let me continue reading. While the bank remains non-committal about the scope of currency, cryptocurrency operations, actions speak louder than words. Exactly, definitely. They don't tell you what they're doing, but if we look just over, if we look over the last, the last year, their grubby blue master of the world, master of the universe, paws and hands are all over cryptocurrency, especially from an industrial and um, compliance sort of background. Um, let me continue. So Goldman's higher financial news site, Tear Sheet, first reported the news of Schmidt's hiring in an article on Monday, indicating that the former cryptocurrency trader had reported to work on April 16th. The article quoted Goldman Sachs spokeswoman uh, Taffy Galvin, who issued the following statement. In response to clients' interest in various digital products, we are exploring how best to serve them in this space. At this point, we have not uh, reached a conclusion of the scope of our digital asset sovereign. Um, the Wall Street Bank has quietly led the institutional push towards cryptocurrency, having already cleared Bitcoin futures on behalf of clients. Goldman CEO Lord Blankfein announced last autumn that the bank was exploring the possibility of a cryptocurrency trading service, you know. So, yeah, without reading this article too much depth, but, um, you know, Goldman, uh, Goldman are, are doing what Goldman should be doing. And um, it's, it's really good that they're helping to create this industry but still we need to watch in so the, 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 the way that I see it is you know it's never too late to invest but huh I'd rather be I'm, I'm happy I got into this space before these guys do because you know they are responsible for inflating prices and how I see it is you know the sooner you get in um, the more value you'll get the more likely you are uh, to be able to get big returns. And it is possible to also invest um, later, further on down the line, and still get big returns, but then you need to time your entries more coordinated. So, you know, what I've learned in these nine months when I've been looking at cryptocurrency on a full-time basis is that um, this is a very seasonal sort of market so far. Um, you know, with December having the highest market capital and then over the last three months, you know, it's just fell and only recently it's starting to get to get to go up again. So um, 
I've just really learning just by observing the market and being able to time my entries into particular positions um, in, in an optimal fashion. So um, as they say, you know, you, you sell at the high and you buy at the low. So um, fortunately, you know, I've made some great returns just recently, just in the last few weeks, because I bought really at the low of the market when Bitcoin was around uh, 6,000, uh, 6,400 to 6,800. Um, I bought some BTC and then um, I got into lots of positions with some of my altcoins, you know, and I've been handsomely rewarded for it. Um, so this is what I'm doing. And it's, it's taken me, you know, a few months to, to, to really be able to do this. Um, whereas in the past, because I checked some of my trading history with some of the past altcoins I, I bought, I always bought them on the high. So even like right now, because I bought them in previous highs last year and the year before, um, I'm not in profit into some of those coins. So um, another thing, coin group, flip flopping Iran finally goes all in on cryptocurrency crackdown. Um, is the country shutting down comp competitors in preparation for their own cryptocurrency? Um, Iran has been going hot and cold on cryptocurrencies lately. In December last year, the Secretary of Iran's High Council of Cyberspace said they welcome Bitcoin. We are at the HCC, welcome Bitcoin, but we must have regulations for Bitcoin and any digital currency. Our view regarding Bitcoin is positive, but it, is, but it does not mean that we will not require regulations in this regard because following the rules is a must. Okay, so uh, I don't really even think that this has much credibility right now. Um, let me, let's, let's really disregard this from some of the articles that we're covering. And um, yes, another thing that I wanted to show you is CoinMarketCal. Um, I came across this a few weeks ago, but this is really good for showing you, you know, what's on the horizon for cryptocurrency in general and some of the coins that you might be interested in, you know. So if we can see, you know, we have a lot of events set up. Um, we've got some all over the world. But, you know, we have some for Cardano, some for Veritasium, uh, some for Lockchain, some for Neo, And it, this is a really good website for keeping track of what sort of social events are crypto related. Um, so really, that's that's all of the headlines that I wanted to discuss and dissect in this segment. Um, a few other things, actually, that I wanted to discuss is that I, um, I'm i really happy because one of the ICOs that I got into, uh, BABS, which is banking as a blockchain sort of service, um, this, this um, cryptocurrency is looking to really bank the unbanked. And um, over the last two weeks, you know, I've I've got a 2.5x return on my initial ICO investment. Um, so that's really good. I'm, I'm really happy to share that. And um, yes, on Tuesday last week, excuse me, on Monday last week, um, the lending block ICO finished and I was invited to um, some informal drinks and social networking um guys if you're interested in looking to get any coins while they're new um i would say check out you know lending block um i think i did my due diligence on them they only wanted to raise 10 million market cap um their their ico was successful um now they are really looking at starting to do the work i was able to meet with the team they had a small team shout out to steve shout out to alex and shout out to oh i've forgotten this lady's name uh, a really nice warm lady I, I forgot her her name it will come back to me but yeah it was really good to meet the team and socialize with other people in that network and then um the day afterwards uh, we were at the blockchain uh, expo 
and that was in the Olympia, uh, and that was really good. Uh, I met some people from IBM, and um, I had a I had an interesting conversation with a young lady at IBM. Hopefully, she's locked on. Hopefully, she's watching this. But it really surprised me that you know people are a world apart there's almost like two divisions you know there's, there's literally two divisions i think goldman are smart because i think goldman sort of um you know they look at our market i.e coin market cap they um are going to get into a trading desk so they want to make a percentage of all of the trades regardless of what the market is doing however after speaking to uh, the people at IBM in the Olympia blockchain, um, the young lady told, I was speaking to, told me that she didn't have any cryptocurrency and that she was speaking to um, some of her, her colleagues who were like older males, probably in their 50s. And they were like, don't, don't, don't bother with cryptocurrency. It's just a waste of time. Um, and, and that's, you know, it, it just showed me that, wow, that was really un unfortunate because if you start to look at blockchain, um, if you look at the enterprise level, you will see companies like IBM in there because, um, you know, they have sort of developed or they sort of support the development of uh, an enterprise level blockchain called Hyperledger. Um, Hyperledger, you're not going to see on coin market cap. But it is a blockchain used by enterprise and um, some other cryptocurrencies um, like a new like a ICO that I got into uh, recently called Omnitude. Um, they use the Hyperledger blockchain and there are a few others that use the Hyperledger blockchain. And basically the Hyperledger blockchain is created by the sort of Linux foundation. However, uh, this young lady was telling me that you have IBM and a lot of their developers supporting it. So it, I found it really weird and strange that IBM are sort of uh, sporting or are sort of sponsoring um, a open source blockchain i i just thought how are they making money from it but then i guess what they're doing is they ivm are sort of targeting the institutional uh consumers maybe those companies that believe that they should be on the blockchain and then ibm are probably providing them some consultancy experience and charging the customers directly uh, for their time and for their cap um, for their human capital whilst they are you know developing on an open source platform that's how I would uh, surmise it um, and yes when I was speaking to her I just really wanted to find out you know how I, IBM are involved in this space and basically it's it's how I've summarized it to you but then at the same time it looks like they're not really aware of any sort of crypto currencies you know she didn't invest into any cryptos she didn't have any bitcoin herself and she was told by her colleagues who were like older gentlemen not to bother your time and i just found that to be completely ignorant you know because it's that banker mentality or of or, or that jamie diamond mentality yeah we're gonna separate blockchain from cryptocurrency you know and Fair enough, you can do that, but you're not going to really do it successfully, in my opinion. Um, but that can be a whole video anyway. So, yeah, I'm just, in, in my opinion, it just felt like, you know, some of these people, they just don't really have a clue. Because um, how can you have that, you know, how can you have that perspective of saying, oh, yeah, the, um, we want the blockchain, but we don't want cryptocurrency when one of the reasons that so many people find value in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is because you have the ability to issue your own sort of form of money, money, your own sort of monetary value. And therefore, you know, you're able to have things like WePower. People are able to, you know, um, buy and sell electricity on a peer-to-peer -peer basis 
using a token, using a coin, and that coin can be liquidated into hard physical cash, you know. However, if you were to do it the other way around, using the financial um, banking institution, then there would be intermediaries, and then it wouldn't be worthwhile because, you know, you would have to pay, you would have to pay another man to get in between two people doing transactions. So really, this is where the blockchain is going to revolutionize things. So it just made me come away from the blockchain event thinking that, you know, a lot of these institutions, they, they're, they're in this space, but if their people don't get it, then they don't get it. But kudos to them, you know. Um, I don't really mean to be putting anyone down. I'm just sharing my views, and I I hope you can understand a little bit of my my, my frustrations. Why uh, I found it strange that a company or or employees of a company like IBM didn't really get it. But then an important takeaway here, um, viewers, ladies, gentlemen, is that there are literally two worlds to blockchain you know so here on coin market cap we see 150 what excuse me we see 1592 cryptocurrencies and all of these are more or less public cryptocurrencies you know this is really just the tip of the iceberg because there's a whole big black iceberg which is under which is underneath the sea, which we don't see, which companies like IBM are involved in, in private blockchains, you know, and then I heard, think, uh, companies like Walmart uh, want their own private blockchain as well. So there's, there's really so much of this space going on. So how we should read this is that the values that we see in coin market cap are all are going to be are always going to be smaller than the true value we see you know because there are lots of cryptocurrency projects and coins which aren't even listed on coin market cap because they're not on the right exchange uh, which means that we don't know the true value of what we're seeing here as well so that's just something to bear in mind um, and another thing, you know, that I'm really happy for is that, you know, we're seeing green everywhere. Uh, my personal portfolio has increased by 35.63%. Uh, I'm really happy uh, that it's increased that much. And some of the best gainers in my portfolio are Populous, uh, Wabi. Uh, so where's Populous? Yeah, Populous is at number 29. Also, Wabi, that's that's performed really well recently over the last two weeks. Where's Wabi? Is it in the top 100? It should be. Okay, maybe not. Uh, Wabi and EOS. EOS, that's that's really increasing leaps and bounds. And Omiza Go. Yes, there's Omiza Go. That's really increased a lot. And also Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, this has increased a lot as well, so it's jumped. Um, I think personally for me, um, I will really be excited when we when we get to and exceed all time high, which was laid in December, and I do think that might be possible, especially in the summer months. Um, you know, another event that we have coming up in a few weeks in I think it's the middle of May is the consensus um, event in New York. Um, you know, from there, we're going to get lots of institutional uh, money being exposed to cryptocurrency. And then we're likely to see investments in the top 10, maybe top 30 and beyond explode as well. So that will be really interesting to see. And um, the last thing that I'll, that I want to leave you as, as, the, the last thing that I want to leave you with is that um, <clears throat> I think, you know, things to bear in mind is that if you're interested in cryptocurrency, you should get into it with a viewpoint to be a long-term investor. And that doesn't mean that you need to be researching every day, but I think you should really have the viewpoint that, yeah, you're going to be in this environment for a minimum of three to five, maybe 10 years. And really your focus should be as learning as much as possible. Um, 
and with this viewpoint, you know, um, I think when I started looking at cryptocurrency full time last year, I invested into a lot of dApps, a lot of decentralized applications. Um, I invested into things like Omiza Go. I invested into Populous, uh, which is also a dApp. I invested into 10x. Um, and some of these coins, bar 10x right now, you know, they're, they're good pies. You know, I, I picked my, my dApps relatively well. However, now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for long-term value. I want to get 100, if not 1,000x over a period of many years. So what I'm looking to do is invest in the blockchains. You know, I'm looking to invest in the Bitcoin. I already do invest in Bitcoin. I already invest into Ethereum. Um, I already invest into EOS. I already have some Cardano. So I'm looking at what are the next blockchains. You know, NEO also has my interest as well. Um, so these are, you know, things that you should just bear in mind, guys. And, you know, with that, that, that is all for now. So, yeah, thank you for, you know, uh, watching this video. Excuse me, my ramblings. I hope you found some value in this video and um, some of the things that I've been saying. Um, if you do have any suggestions of things that you'd like me to cover, please do put it in the comments below. And tomorrow, or hopefully very soon, I will do a video with the giveaway that I'll be doing for 100 subscribers. So yes, this is Brother Crypt signing out, helping to guide you through the realm of crypto. Take care. Keep it cryptic. Peace.